states, Dear actress, mother of Festo, and the biggest fan of a Lifetime Achievement Award recipient to read out the citation. Dolly Thakur.
is that I have to speak for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I wasn't told it was suggested, and I snapped up the idea. Because anything beyond five minutes becomes an address. <laughs> so, actually, I feel very strange here. My place is there, <laughs> or there. <laughs> and uh, I'm saying to myself, oh, just because he is in a realistic plane, doesn't mean that he should walk as he does in his drawing room. <laughs> but I have also had things to say about people's voices and I've often wondered why actors don't work on their voices. <laughs> Some of them come as monotones, <laughs> some of them come as mumbles, <laughs> and some of them come like the players in Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, 
this is is a lot just in terms of um, just reading up a lot on the work that's been done and what is taken about it. Just the degree to which the current claim has taken place and the story that we have. Um, I thought maybe we can rewind a little bit to when uh, when has spoken might have been um, at your uh, at your at your yeah um, <laughs> a little bit further and ask you how uh, how that started. So say it's mentioned that uh, it was in UK with the Sahi Library, uh, spent six years there. Um, in one of the pieces you mentioned how when we uh, are in college and uh, <coughs> students there's a life of students and students that are going to school. Uh, something uh, that you used to be in UK that uh, started off a lot of people But 
I had a series on gardens because people living in small homes also had little gardens in their corners in their land. And when you got them talking about them, they were totally altered. Their faces were becoming, mm -hmm. they were suddenly not automated, <laughs> but human beings. So then I had this series from gardens. I had a series on retirement plans. Uh, and in retirement plans, of course, I always had to include some managers. So, <laughs> so the managers all sat very steady and said, well, this isn't really the end. We will be starting our second innings, <coughs> which would be consulting for some other company, sitting on the board of some other company. In short, carry on from the desktop. The workers, and particularly the women, was such a delight to interview. Oh man, we're just waiting for the last day here. I've been dying to travel. I'm going to travel. I'm going to learn baking. I'm going to spend time with my grandchildren. I have always wanted to learn swimming. I've never managed. I'm going to learn now to do at age 57, 58. And it was so thrilling. So it, it, that sort of material I sought and wrote up and put into my house map. And I must say, normally when we distributed them every month, uh, when we left the office, we would find <coughs> issues <laughs> left behind all of us. I like to think I didn't see any like that outside to go They all went home because even the wife told me, workers' rights, oh, we are reading the actual <laughs> I mean, it, it has, it's still on the bookshelf. 
I'm um, quite shocked to uh, realize that it's still around. <laughs> um, when it was first published, uh, my feminist friends were very quiet. <laughs> they didn't say anything at all. Um, and of course, that was because I had broken that sacred bond of sisterhood. And one woman doesn't do it to another woman. So, um, and, and of course, that was the, the, uh, the age in which a feminist wife was seen as strong if they walked out of their husband, banging the door like Nora. It's a So my wife didn't fall into that. And this other woman was there getting sympathy. So it was all wrong for feminism. <laughs> but as the years went by, I was again shocked to realize that people are teaching it as a feminist now. So feminism has come along. And 
ultimately, my last word there was that I'm too old. <laughs> I am. I mean, you have to accept that. I am. I mean, my grand grandmother would never understand what I was doing in my life. In fact, my mother used to say to me, oh, why are you doing all of this? For, for, for whom are you doing And if I said, I'm doing it myself, it wasn't a concept you actually understood. Yeah. To do something for yourself. So, uh, you know, that gap. And now, I feel it. So. <laughs> Yeah. 